guys, how you doing? It looks like we are live. How's everything going? Thank you so much for being here, everybody. So let's see what camera we're gonna use. This looks like a pretty cool camera. We have the we have all the uh, the people talking, which is really cool. So you know the people who are seeing it tomorrow can see who I'm talking to, which is really cool. So we have John and Nekos, and we have uh, John Payne, John Diekman, we have Raul, good to see you. I see Willie, and let's say who else we got there. Uh, Colette, great to see you, Colette, thank you for hanging out. We have Roy, so nice healthy group here to start part two of Paint the Irish Last. So <clears throat> this is going to be exciting. It's funny, usually I'm just sort of, you know, hanging out, waiting. Up oh, there it is. I found my favorite freehand shield. Almost lost my mind. Hey, what's up right there, Nichols? Good to see you. So glad you're here. And so we have a lot of great people here today, like Nichols and John and Raul and Roy and, and the other John and Willie. And I know more are going to come soon, so that's exciting. So let's see. All right, so now we are in part one, part two. So part one basically had a lot to do with just mapping things out, but now we're actually going to take it one step further. Wendy, how you feeling? How's it going? Yes, this is the freehand shield to get. I'm telling you, it is like the best thing since sliced bread. It's so great to see you there, Wendy. Roy and Tone, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, we have Air Todd, which is so cool, from San Diego. And I'm so glad Wendy's feeling better. That makes me happy. Thank God for that, right? And so having a bit of an issue with my hair, but you know, that's okay, I'll get by. And let's see. Um, so we have the light mixture going, and that's always a lot of fun. Remember, when you're working this technique, guys, you want to stay with the light mixture for a while. So I know right now you might be tempted, hey, let's go and get some of those darks or something like that. And that's something you really want to, you really want to uh, slow down with it, right? There's definitely no rush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this painting as a whole, right? And so basically, I'm going to look and see, you know, where can I just slowly darken some of the larger areas of the painting? So basically, we're still in the light mixture. We'll darken some areas, but it's really not going to really affect it too much, you know? So that's the good thing. It's not going to uh, make things too dark or relative. It'll be dark, but not, not in a crazy way. So that's very good. And so I have my reference up here. And I use the program Pure Ref. I can't recommend that program enough for those who work from the computer. It's very crucial. So uh, really important, you know, so definitely. Oh, so Nico says, uh, which artist inspires me the most? I would have to say the 19th century French uh, neoclassical painter, uh, Jean-Auguste Dominique Angle. I'll actually post his name. He's actually incredible. And, and what he said was, and there you can see it, and what, uh, what Angle said was that Every great painting is not about 80% drawing, so drawing is so important. You know what I mean? So that's where I get my idea of having that basis of the drawing because that is basically the, the bones and everything, you know? So it's very important. 
Oh, yes, me and some French people can say it, right? John Augusta Dominique Angra. Yes, again, you hear a lot of angris and ang and all that, but it's actually angra. And, uh, but thank you, Wendy, and thank you, Neko. Steve, how you doing? Good to see you. How's everything? Steve is in the house. I think it's time for my glasses, so let's make this happen. And let's see. Okay. So, we're still looking at the, the larger shapes. So I'm not going to get involved too much in the smaller shapes. Although I really want to, right? You know, when we're doing these paintings, we really want to get into that detail really quickly. But we have to keep ourselves from doing that. You know, we have to, we have to go against our primal instincts. And that's so important. So again, you see, um, not only am I looking at this dark, but I'm looking at the angle, right? So angles are crucial when it comes to the large shapes. If you have one large shape with the angles off, it's all going to be off like a domino effect. Chris, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad you're here. So we're just going to slowly move this over. So the painting, the uh, airbrush I'm using is the Extreme Patriot Arrow. And this is my own uh, custom airbrush. And basically, it's the Extreme Patriot Arrow on steroids. I do a lot of things to make it have this incredible detail. And at this point, I just can't imagine painting without it. So you see, like when I squint my eyes, I see these darkest darks and I want to, Hey Brad, good to see you. How are you? So glad you're here, sir. Now I'm going to use my freehand shield. And guys and girls, I want you to do perpendicular, not parallel. I do not want to uh, ever hear you guys going parallel on this because it is, it will be a disaster. Trust me. Because then you'll have to fix with a nice dark, dark line there. And I don't want that to happen to you. So if we just go perpendicular. You'll be alright, right? That's how they look at it. You'll be alright. Hey, Jewel, good to see you. How are you? Thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, wow. What an honor, Jewel. Thank you. Oh, wow, so that's so cool. And so, Jewel, we're just doing part two of painting the Irish Lass in, in airbrush and India ink. So, I'm so glad you're here. What an honor. And again, just going perpendicular and not parallel. Because if I went parallel, I'd create a dark line right here. And that just wouldn't be good. So... We want to make sure we keep everything organic, right? In nature, you know, things are rarely symmetrical and they're very rarely have a neat shape. It's almost like one shadow shape is almost like a torn piece of paper. It has that roughness to it, which, you know, you'll always, uh, you know, you'll always notice once, once it's brought to your attention so that's what we want to do, guys. We want to keep things extremely organic when we're doing the shapes. Oh, well, thank you, Jewel. I appreciate that. You know, uh, Essentino Artists, if you guys ever want to go ahead and you you want to uh, make money on the Internet, you want, you want to... Uh, build a website, maybe sell things or teach. Essentino Artists, they, and if you just go to, just follow Essentino Artists on YouTube, they are the best in helping people to actually get more subscribers and to learn about uh, search engine uh, optimization. And they have this wonderful live stream, which reminds me of my live stream 
with you guys is that everyone is really just so cool and hang out and I look forward to every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's so cool, you know. Neko says he needs money. <laughs> we all do, Nekos, but that's okay. That's the human condition, you know. But, uh, so it's always good to see Nekos. Now, Nekos, I see when I get my hair cut, his parents own... Uh, the hairstylist, he's a really funny guy. He wants to be a comedian when he grows up, which is really exciting, right? So, Nekos, that's really cool. And keep your dreams in front of you. Don't ever let anyone discourage you, okay? you got to keep your dreams close to you. And you got to continue to take care of your dreams. Because no one can take care of them like yourself. Hi, Michelle. How you doing? Good to see you. I, I haven't seen you before, Michelle. Um, and we're just going to continue just slowly darkening things up. Oh, you're very welcome, Jewel. I enjoy your guys' uh, live stream every Thursday night. I, I look forward to it. And it's so great because it gives me... Uh, Something really cool on Thursdays before Thursday nights were kind of like a void. So now I I don't miss them I don't miss one episode Oh well, thank you. So Michelle, I'm so glad you're here and So welcome and of course this is part two of painting the Irish Lass in airbrush and India ink and right now part two we're still kind of in the beginning stage we're just mapping things out slowly and so as you can see i'm trying not to get too detailed because that's our first inclination is to get detailed you know and trying to look at the big picture trying to get the big puzzle pieces first and then the small puzzle pieces will fall into place so that's what we're really trying to do and Michelle, one thing about this live stream that I've been doing now for over four years straight, I think it's going on four and a half, no, about four years. And I'll tell you, uh, it's just grown with just these great people. And I just have so much fun with everybody. And it's a great place to just hang out, talk about art or other stuff. A lot of time we talk about cake. We got a lot of people mm -hmm. Like Wendy, who is a really great baker, she cooked some, uh, some really. I think you do like a, a red velvet cake. Is that true, Wendy? Is that is that what you like uh, to make? I think it's like a red velvet cake, but I may be mistaken. So right here, you'll see that we have the anatomy of the forehead, and one of the things I always talk about, if you look at the forehead. And go in the mirror and really look at your own forehead. And you'll see there's a lot going on with the forehead. It's not just this like bone over it. It's, there's, there's some ridges over here in the forehead, right? So you're going to put that in there. And there's some muscles going on. And there's this thing called the orbital ridge, which is, Willie says he likes uh, making cake. And Wendy says red velvet. Well, I'm glad you're having a good time, Michelle. That's so cool. And so you see, this is what we're doing. We're really trying to make, uh, we're really trying to uh, sort of construct the portrait, right? We're looking at the bones and we're looking at the muscles. And then we'll go ahead and do the details. Like when you're painting a house, not painting a house, but building a house, First you do the bricks and then the, uh, the wood and then, and then the, uh, the aluminum siding and stuff like that. That comes later. Hey Bill, how's it going? Good to see ya. Boy, I wish Wendy would make us some cake because 
I don't have any junk food in the house, and that's kind of a bummer, you know? And I don't have any sugary drinks either. All things that, you know, I know are bad for me, but I'm painfully craving. <laughs> And you see, uh, one of the things I want to show you real quick is I'm going to come here and I'm going to type in uh, anatomy of the face and let's see if I could show you anatomy of the face. Now we'll see when we look at the anatomy of the face, I'm going to go to some images and maybe get something from like uh, Getty Images or something, something gruesome I think, but not only for learning uh, purposes. So, so here we go, let me see if I could go here. And so look at this uh, face over here, see this? And you can see that there's a lot going on in the forehead, so right here you see this little ridge that goes like right here? Now, if we were to, let's say, go back to the painting, you can actually see it right there. You see that? You can actually see why that's there. It's, that's, that's the reason. And then you could look at other areas. Um, so you see here, you have this uh, sort of the forehead comes out and right here is like the peak and then it goes back in and so if we go ahead and look at the painting you can see that the same thing is happening that you know right here is like a little shadow because it peak it comes out here peaks right here and then there's a little bit of shadow now it's a very light shadow because it's it's not like you know, it doesn't come down that much, but there's a slight thing on there. So you can see by understanding the... Oh, Neko's got dry popcorn. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Glad to hear that. Enjoy, my friend. And so you see, like, right here, I could look at the anatomy of the human skull. And now I can look for things. So it's much easier to find, uh, much easier to find a place if you have a map, right? So you see, it's much easier to find the shadow here. It's much easier to find this temporal lobe. And then over here, you can see right here where the indentation of the eye socket is. And that's when you are seeing this too, this indentation of the eye socket. So those are very important things to know. So I hope that kind of helps out a little bit when you are painting the skull or something and you think there's really nothing to it. Get out that anatomy book and really look into it. I think that is really going to make a difference when you are painting the portrait. So I hope that helps. And uh, so Brad says, uh, I have helped him a lot in the last year. Thanks, Brad. And Neko says, uh, I'm a really good artist and showed, uh, oh, you showed my art, your art teacher. How cool. Tell, tell your art teacher, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I had no sugary drinks, so actually, made homemade lemonade limeade which wasn't too bad you know you get desperate and chris says it's one oh okay cool so and then patrick how you doing patrick all the way from montreal how are you good to see you so let's take a look at the nose real quick we'll look at the anatomy of the nose and we'll see if we can go ahead and uh and so so here you see we have the nose and you see right here it's there's this little uh, sort of crease in the middle of the cartilage of the bone at the tip of the nose and let's see if we can see that in our painting or maybe we can look for that in our painting right in our reference exactly so let's say if I went ahead and zoomed in on the nose right let's zoom in on the nose 
and let's see if we can lighten it up just a little bit and yes by looking at the anatomy I'm able to look for the sort of the map or the road map and you remember that little crease and you can see in full effect right here so I'm able to not only look for something but to understand it and just like if you're let's say you're a writer and you're writing about a person if you know that person more intimately you're gonna have a lot more to say so as a painter you need to learn anatomy because you need to have more to say and you need to know the human form more intimately to actually say something more profound and uh, and so that's so important and let's see we got over here so good to see you Brad how's it going uh, how cold did it get in Canada I think he said something like it was negative like 37 Celsius the other day that was unbelievable so you see how we were able to go ahead and actually understand the nose and what's happening and and it's a lot easier to paint something when you understand it so if we zoom out you can see like wow and we can also see if I was a little overzealous with that I think I was I'm using this uh, the mono uh, 3.8 and this is the knock 3.8 I really love it because it's a uh, a larger area that it covers but it also does not rip the paper or damage the paper whatsoever and so that really helps especially in the early going you want to save the paper right that's so important so that's great and so okay so let's continue and we're going to continue moving around the face so now you'll see here that there's usually people call it the laugh line and it really isn't the laugh line and so let's see if I could uh, look at something in the face here in the anatomy so today's kind of going to be about a little bit of painting a little bit of anatomy you know trying to uh, help you out and and see some things so let's see if I can just bring this part over Let's see if I was able to do that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll bring this over here. And so here's the face, and you see what it's called, the nasolabial fat compartment. Boy, that doesn't sound attractive on a woman, right? <laughs> the nasal. So, but you can see, you look for it, and it's a nasal, nasolabial uh, fat compartment nasal meaning nose labial meaning side right and fat compartment so the side of the nose fat compartment and that's what does it and then you know you have this crease here you'll see that a lot and that's all that's called the medial muscular band so let's go ahead and see if we could take a look at that and so so let's do that uh, nasolabial fat compartment right here and you can see how it comes out right there and it's the side of the nose and it's a basically a deposit of fat that's on all of us it's really interesting how how everything sort of like comes to play you know in life we if we really delve into it it's it gets really how do you say you know you can delve into it and go as deep the water is as deep as you want to go which is great now right here was another area so we went ahead and worked now this because it's in shadow we're not seeing the uh, the nasolabial fat compartment over here so it's basically kind of obscured over here but it definitely is visible over here. So we're gonna look for that. 
And let's go ahead and look for that other thing which was really cool. Let's see if we can see it. Okay, so we'll pull this over here again. And so this right here, which is the medial muscular band. So let's see if we can see the medial muscular band. And yes, I do see it. It's right here, but it's very faint in her. And you see it's just very faint. We don't want to make it too pronounced. And then she would look tired and run down. And I know no lady wants to be uh, looking tired and run down. If I paint someone looking tired and run down, they like, oh, wow, thank you, Jewel. I appreciate that. Oh, wow, Jewel, you and Arita are the best. And I just want to say thank you again. You are the coolest. And definitely looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. I won't miss it. Wild horses can't take me away. But I want you to, you guys, if you're free tomorrow at 9 o'clock, Thursday, Eastern Time, check out Essentino Artist Livestream. They are amazing. Just incredible. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do that just like that. And let's see just like that there you go and now one of the things we want to do we don't want to get uh, we don't want to get too dark in those areas so we're gonna leave that alone and maybe things will darken around it so that's what we're going to really uh, really neglect to make too many changes in the early going because everything's so light so if something's too dark you can go two ways. You can erase it, or you can just say, you know what, I'm just going to bring the rest of the area together. That sort of thing. There we go. So one of the things, so we're painting a woman, but we're also, it's also an anatomy study, right? So it's one of the same. So that one area, and I keep forgetting the word, and here it is again and yes so it is right here it's the medial muscular band and so you can see it right here where that's what it looks like you know in the flesh but underneath the skin it's these bands of muscle or, or ligaments or something like that so we definitely have to look for that and then here we have the palpebral palp portion of the orbiculus oculi. That's Latin, and <laughs> that's not easy. So, but definitely, sort of like the, I would say the under eyelid, or some would say the bag of the eye, like we have eye bags or something like that. That's a least uh, attractive way of saying it. So let's look at that medial muscular band and see if we could uh, isolate that okay so on here we do see a little bit of the medial muscular band but it's very very light and then we'll also go ahead and make sure that we do this part perfect Oh, I'll show you how to draw Neckles, definitely. Yes, that's true. And I'm telling you, it's so great, uh, Essentino artists. They're so inspiring. And they're just, you know, powerful people. You know, powerful in the sense that, you know, what they envision is coming, coming to life. And it really makes me push harder to, uh, you know, try and be very successful with social media and the live streams on Thursday are helping me so much really are and just encouragement you need encouragement because you know trying to uh, do the social media thing most people are like what <laughs> right <laughs> Yes, so definitely, Roy, uh, Color Graphics, check them out tomorrow. They are so great.
And what's really cool is I think, uh, Jewel, during Christmas, you guys gave away several, uh, on the live stream, several $50 gift cards from Amazon. That was really cool. That was very exciting. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to darken the eyelash here. And you can see, now watch this, uh, my custom airbrush right now, the kind of detail that I can get. And you'll see. So one thing that's really great, uh, Bill, about Essentino, Essentino Artists, is that they have a, they have a class on SEO and really could help your search engine optimization and more people you can get a lot more traffic on your YouTube channel so I know you're working hard on that Bill so definitely check them out yeah that was so cool the giveaway was so exciting you know I I was so happy that people who won I would have been happier if I won <laughs> but that's everybody but it was great. And let's see. Uh, hey, Cairo, how you doing? Good to see you. How's everything? So we have a nice group today, uh, staying in the 20s, which is not bad. Uh, so as long as I'm staying in the 20s, I think that's a pretty good live stream. And last week, I think we, look, I'm, okay, so you can see how, how detailed I can get, which is really fantastic. So what I do is I take a stock Extreme Patriot Arrow, and I customize it. I do things to the needle, I change the trigger. I uh, use uh, Teflon tape and just do a lot of different things to really optimize the control of the airbrush. And you can see I can get pencil, pencil-like control. And I think we all need control, but I really think that with my airbrush, your control could go up at least 30 to 40% if you're a new airbrush artist, you know? which is great, you know, which is really fantastic. So, and I do, uh, I do sell this airbrush on my website and I'm just going to put it in right here. It is paintedglyphs.com and there you'll see different things that I do carry that are akin to working in this technique. And believe it or not, my custom airbrush is only 149 and I do ship all over the world so that's very exciting and I do and I will say that I do get custom micron like detail but I don't have to tell you you just gotta look and see what I'm doing right now and the white of the eyes remember are rarely white so they are more gray so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to go ahead and give more volume to the eye there and maybe deepen this shadow here for the crease. There we go. And then let's remember what we do. Wow, Brad, thank you so much, sir. That is so great. Wow, thank you. You guys are amazing. You make me feel really good. So that's so great so um jewel and brad and you know what's cool you guys are both from canada jewel and orit are from vancouver which is i love that city and brad is from manitoba which is really exciting so you guys are great you guys are really inspiring me giving me encouragement and that's so so very cool so thank you and we're going to go ahead and move on over to the other eye. You know, what we do on one eye, we got to do on the other. Canadians do rock. I have to say that, you know. Todd says, Tim, uh, you messed up on the pick at the beginning of the portrait using white. That's, uh, oh, can you mess up on the pick? 
Oh, so you're wondering if you can mess up on the picture in the in the light process, in the white process. No, you you really the only way you can is if you go if you go to uh, you go too heavy with the white. You want to keep the white very transparent because we're working in transparent. So if you went opaque with the white it would cause a problem and you would have sort of a disparity of texture. And you don't want that, right? You don't want a disparity of texture. So you want to keep everything transparent in the beginning. And then we could work into, uh, oh wow, so Jewel was born in Manitoba, what part? That is so cool, like Winnipeg? Yeah, we Brad Brad has been my student for the past year and I'm learning so much about Canada, you know, hanging out with Brad and uh, you know, and also you know that you guys actually have real summers. You know, we up north, up here in in the states think that it's the frozen tundra 24/7. So Brad helped to shake that myth from me. <laughs> That's cool. And so you can see the same thing we did on this eye, we have to make sure we do on that eye. So one of the things you can see the difference of the, the, other, the other eye, we could see the eyelashes individual, but on this eye, it's all in shadow. So it's all part of one big shape. And you see how light this is in comparison to that? One of the things with value is uh, you have to really, oh, Winnipeg, that's cool, the Winnipeg Jets. That's a really cool hockey team. So I hear that's a good city. That's a really cool city. And so basically, we want to make sure that the values are not uh, too far away. So when we look at the reference, we can definitely see the values are closer. So what I can do is I'll probably be about two inches away and I'll dust that down so it's not, doesn't stand out so much. And we'll notice when we go ahead and um, zoom out, we'll see that it looks much more unified. And some, you know, in shadow, some of the anatomical landmarks aren't there. There's a hint of them, but not much. So you see a lot of the anatomical uh, landmarks in the light areas, more so, which is, uh, you know, something to look forward to. Remember, in the light, all the details are shouts, and in the, sh in the shadows, all the details are whispers. So I just stab myself with my needle. I'm okay. <laughs> it's only my finger, so that's good. So you can see how things are sort of shaping up a little bit, getting a little deeper, and we're still in the light mixture, meaning things are still very light, but since everything is so light around it, it's looking dark. So let's go ahead and we wanna move down the center line. So we're gonna work a little bit on the uh, Cupid's bow. That little thing right there is the Cupid's bow. We're gonna work on that. We're gonna come into the lips and the chin and then what I might do is cover up the face and maybe start working in the background. Cover up the face and the body with the, with the shield. And I'll show you guys how to do that. It's pretty cool if you haven't seen me do it before. Okay, so the Cupid's bow is a very interesting part of the anatomy. We all have it. And let's see if we can look at that in the anatomy here. So... Yeah, so here it's not not really showing because they're doing a cross section, but I'm gonna look and see if they show the Cupid's bow. Now they do call it something. Let's see, let's see. We'll look at this one. Okay, here you go. It's called the Obicularis Oris, and I think that's what the Cupid's bow is. The Cupid's bow is not the technical term, but what a lot of people call it. It's what's right in the center. Uh, right under the center of your nose. So let's go ahead and work on that. 
and see if we can isolate it and figure out how to paint it. So let's do that. Sorison, all the way from from Scotland. How are you? So glad to see ya. So that's so interesting. So I know Brad and and uh, Bill paint on razor blades. Uh, so that's very exciting. Haven't painted on razor blades yet, and I'm not sure I'm gonna go there. But that's really cool that you guys can do that. You know, just goes to show you. Uh, goes to show us that you know it is a will is a way okay great so here is the cupid's bow so we're just going to very lightly paint that in and you'll see that it's a little dark on the center on the outside and then as it moves towards the center it gets a lot lighter and what I do is I increase my distance uh, with the airbrush from the paper to make it lighter a lighter application of the ink. See when I go closer, it gets darker, right? And so there's the Cupid's bow. So you can see how we're able to, you know. Oh, Neckles, I'll take care. Always good to see you. I'll see you uh, next week, hopefully. And uh, continue with your comedy and, you know, keep that goal in front of you. You're going to be a very, very famous comedian one day. I believe in you and so just continue that we're going to continue with this and then right here you know Jean Augusta, um, Jean Augusta Dominique Angada the French neoclassical painter what he said which was interesting he said that he knows the bones and the muscles they're like old friends but he doesn't know their names and I thought that was interesting. He was basically saying you you don't have to know all the technical names for the anatomy, but you have to know them and, you know, expect them when you're painting. You know what I mean? So you don't have to memorize the names, but you do have to look for those anatomical landmarks. So very important. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on those lips okay so let's let me make me smaller so it's always best making me smaller there you go yeah I'm little okay um, so so what we're gonna do is first I want to do the crease between the upper and lower lip now I'm gonna have the airbrush pretty close to the surface and right where the upper lip ends it's its darkest and it's not really a line it's uh, it gets a little bit thicker and thinner but it's not really a line so to speak and let's go ahead and just see the amount of detail that I'm able to do here it really is liberating to be able to do like just tight detail with an airbrush and it really has to do with the airbrush itself so if you guys, uh, anyone out there, guys or girls who are airbrushing and having trouble with detail, give my airbrush a try. I think you'd really be pleasantly surprised because I definitely, definitely sort of, you know, supercharge it to be this, you know, this detail beast. And I back it up. I'll go against anybody with a micron with this airbrush. And custom microns are what now? They're like $500? I'll go head to head with anybody. You know, they work in the ink, I work in the ink. Let's see what they can do. Let's see what I can do with this airbrush. So, I'm up for the challenge. Hey, what's up? So, the the nameless subscriber, do you, own, do you only work in India ink or do you use any other medium? Also, is it easier cleaning up the airbrush than with acrylic? So I'm going to work, I'm going to answer the cleaning up. I clean up only with water. That's all I use. No Windex or anything like that. When it's in your ink, just water and uh, Q-tip. That's it. And so, and believe me, if you look at the history of the airbrush, it was basically made for inks and dyes. 
acrylics came made way later. And if you ask me, acrylics is really the death of a lot of airbrushers, airbrushes. So ink is really the wheelhouse for airbrush. And uh, so but in recent years, it's just been urethanes and acrylics. And that's been the industry standard. But in reality, it's not, it's not the best for it. Now, the second question, do I work in any other mediums? Yes, I'm a trained classical painter. I went to eight years of art school, um, you know, and I'll just name a few schools. High School of Art and Design in Manhattan, the National Academy School of Fine Arts in Manhattan, Art Students League, Long Island University, and uh, Rowan University. And I studied art history, painting, uh, drawing, the model, pastel, you know, pen and ink, you name it. So I was very blessed that my parents uh, exposed me early to, you know, opportunities such as those art schools. And I was blessed to be able to get a full scholarship to those schools. And so the rest is history. But coming into Airbrush, uh, I'm able to come in with a different set of skills. And I could bring things to airbrush, which normally is not in the airbrush, which is a foundation of anatomy, a foundation of, of looking for the larger shapes and sort of the academic approach to glory. So it's, it's really cool. And that's why I basically went into India Inc. because I have such a strong background in India Inc. Uh, I used to do pen and ink in school and I did a lot of that on my own after I left school so it's very um, how do you say uh, more in my wheelhouse to work in India Inc because of my classical training than working in acrylic I just feel that you know acrylic is great and it's wonderful but it does have a very cold appearance to it and remember, I'm coming from the fine art world. You know, I'm a signature member of the Pastel Society of America. I'm a, an elected member of the Allied Artists of America. Uh, I have about 50 to 60 national, international awards for my pastels. So it's not like I came into airbrush cold. I basically... I basically uh, have a lot of experience in other areas and I'm applying that to, to the airbrush, which is exciting because I feel I have something to give to the airbrush world and for students who really want to learn and take it to that next level. So sorry for the really long explanation, but I hope that helps. So you see, we worked on the center line, right? We're going down the center line. Um, uh, well, the thing is, you don't need any reducer for uh, India ink. Just water does great. And so, oh, thank you, Patrick. Patrick says I have a good back. I was very blessed, and I thank my parents. Uh, they put up with me, and I was not inspired to do anything else. So, of course, you know, your parents don't want you to go into art, but they definitely supported me and, uh, you know, and hopefully it'll pay off, you know, and, but I think it does pay off because I'm able to uh, teach this stuff and, and help students realize that, you know, art is not something, this esoteric thing that you're born with, but you can actually get better and better with the right teacher and the hard work. Remember, art only works if you do, right? Uh, teach, you know, art school only works if, if you do. So I definitely give the tools to teach people to fish, not hand them a fish. And that's one of the reasons why I offer these free live streams every week, because I want there to be a place where you could just figure out if this is for you and if you want to go deeper. And if you can't afford, you know, there's people who 
in this tough time can't afford art lessons, but here's some free art lessons that you can see week after week, which is, I think, which is exciting for you guys. Okay, the chin. So we still have to work on the chin. So let's uh, move down here. And so let's look at the chin with the anatomy and try to understand why is the chin uh, shaped like that, right? So let's go to, let's see, let me take this off. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our anatomical figure here. So look at the chin here. You have these, uh, these sort of muscles that are sort of wrapping around, almost like ribbons or something like that. So you have a, what is called a depressor labii inferior, in, inferioris. So the depressor labii inferioris. Try and say that 10 times fast. That seems to be holding down this part over here of the chin. And then the one that comes off to the side is called the depressor anguli oris. So let's take a look at the chin and see if we can actually... So I think we can actually locate the depressor anguli oris. So let's look at that together. Exactly. So you see this right here? That is depressor anguli oris. So that's why you have this shadow coming down here. And you can see a little bit of a, a depression here. It's very light because it's in the shadow side, but you can definitely see the same thing that's going on this side is going on this side, but it's a lot lighter. And you see, if I want a lighter value, I just increase my distance from the surface. But you know, you won't see these little, you won't ever see these tiny little tonality, ton tonal changes, unless you look for it with the anatomical knowledge. Okay? So, oh, so Colette says the eyes are amazing. Thank you. Yes, very interesting model. And um, so the eyes look really dark, but they're really going to lighten up as we darken stuff around it, you know? And let's see. And so, so who's feeling a certain way? So are you, are the acrylic guys feeling like attacked by my reasoning for, for inks and dyes? Uh, but, but honestly, I think it's important to see both sides of it, you know? And, you know, but the thing is, the airbrush really wasn't made for the ink, for the uh, acrylics. And so that's something to really think about and consider, right? But I hear you. You guys do some great things in acrylic. I'm not, I'm not knocking you. I think you, you're, you, uh, you uh, acrylic peeps. I think you're really the coolest. So, so don't worry. I still love you. So let's go. So it used to be when I was in art school, I was trained initially in oil paints. And there was a big debate, oil. <laughs> I'm personally an acrylically offended. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, it's going to be, a, there's going to be a war and I'm going to really start it. You know, the ink and acrylic war. It, it's, it's not going to be good. You know, I'm just, just going to uh, start this really torrid battle. But I think there's enough, there's, there's enough room for the both of us in this here town. <laughs> so as you can see, what I do now is I am going to put in the background. So for me to do that, I'm going to have to cover uh, the face and the shirt. So I'm going to do that using a shield. So it's a little bit of a change of pace. I thought it was a lime pit, but I was mistaken. It's actually a piece of uh, melted ice cube, so that's good. When you are cutting it out, 
Uh, let's not forget the peeps that use automotive paints. Oh, those guys. Well, they're not here, so we can talk about them, Chris. <laughs> I'm only kidding. You know I love the automotive guys. So the nameless subscriber says he's not feeling attack. He uses acrylics and now wondering if I should try inks. Yes, you really should. And let me tell you why you should try inks. Because they make amazing underpaintings. So let's say uh, the nameless subscriber, you go ahead and you do a pencil underpainting, right? And a pencil drawing. And then you go over it with India ink. The great thing is you can still erase that pencil drawing. But if you did an underpainting, let's say in black and white acrylic, that is not going anywhere. So that's why the India ink also. So basically the India ink, which is really cool, has sort of a greenish uh, tinge to it. And it's a little bit warmer than just using black and white. So it really does work well for an underpainting. Now the India inks that I use, they are water. They are waterproof. Being waterproof is actually really cool because when you go over it with the acrylic, it doesn't reactivate them. So it's just one layer working on another layer, and that's the French nineteen the French nineteenth century academic approach, which is called the grisaille in French and that means uh, like gray, a gray underpainting and they also call it a dead painting too and they would do uh, glazes of color over it so the nameless subscriber uh, give it a shot now on my website paintedglyphs.com I actually do sell a set a complete set of those uh, India ink for the airbrush and it's only $16.95 and uh, no matter where you live in the world I can get them to you so definitely think about that they're definitely underpriced because I want everyone to try them at least once they should be much more expensive but like I said I'm a really good friend but I'm not a very good businessman so but definitely give them a try so I'll put the link in the description. Let me do that for you because I'm that kind of guy. Let's see. Painted glyphs. There we go. And I can put a link to my... The link to the inks. I like that. The link to the ink. That's not bad. Okay, so here is the link. Copy. We'll go to Tim's live stream. And there is the link. If you have any questions, go ahead and... Uh, let me know. It'll be great. And let's see. So I'm going to continue with this here. Now notice I'm not going to get involved in little hairs because that's something that I can paint later. So I'm not going to get involved with it. There's a lot of different ways you can paint hair. So you can see I'm just, when I'm cutting, someone told me this about a year ago and since then I couldn't forget it and it works when you're cutting with the razor blade you want to look maybe an inch a, like a maybe a quarter of an inch before you're cutting and this way believe it or not your eye and your hand kind of follow it you know which is really cool so here I cut it a little bit too much further in, so I'm just going to correct that. Okay. And we're just going to continue, and I'm going to show you my football. Since the Super Bowl is coming up here in the States, I'm going to show you my football method. I think that's going to be exciting for you guys who haven't seen a football method. And let's see what we have here, what I miss. Uh, oh, look at that. Wendy says she'll charge his $50. <laughs> and Michelle says, I see all the ladies using glitter on their epoxy cups. Okay. Brad says, I was blown away by Tim's work, and now I strive to get to that level. And right now, that means ink. I do have acrylic. Thank you, sir. Well, 
See, Brad is like in my mentorship program, so he's in for the long haul. So, you know, uh, that's really cool. And let's see what else I missed. I think that's it. You guys are just talking amongst yourselves, which is good. That's what this live stream is about. Not just, you know, listening to me, but meeting each other and exchanging ideas and recipes for cake and uh, cappuccino. That's another thing. I'm really craving like sugary drinks. And right now I just really want, <laughs> And it's terrible. Right now, I really just want to have uh, like a cappuccino or something. But I'm refraining because I don't want my body to go to pot, you know? It's, it's a struggle. It really is. I mean, my goodness. And so we're just going to continue down here. And we're going to come over. Now here we have, so interesting part right here by her ear. But I'm not going to get hung up on that. I'm going to paint it later. So we're just going to come in here because the hair is very close to the background in value. Remember, we're not working in color. And so we're, we're working uh, in value. So if things are very close in value, why would we go ahead and mask it off? I mean, the values are so close to one another. Okay, I'm going to come right here. I got to change my blade, you know. But, you know, I'm always trying to cut corners, so I wait to change my blade. Some people change their blade after one use. But being poor, that's not exactly what I want to do, you know. I definitely don't. Now, if I go ahead and uh, miss a contour, I can always fix it, so no worries. And we'll just bring that down like that. Okay, there she is. Now, when it's like this, right, and it's not coming off, I don't want you to get excited and just start pulling because then you're going to have a beautiful tear and that's not going to be good when you're doing the masking. So find out where it's not a clean cut and then just slowly go over it until you get that clean cut and then once this side is done then you can continue looking so here we have everything right there's the culprit and let's go ahead and take care of that so some people might say tim you know you're taking a long time well i want it done right so i don't really care how long it takes that's not important and i hope that translates to you guys don't worry about how long it takes. It's not, that's not the key, you know. The key is basically getting it done right, getting it done beautiful, you know. And the naval subscriber says, thanks for the link. He'll check it out. Only one question. Do you know how well India Ink does with clothing? No idea whatsoever, my friend. Um, I would definitely do a test. Uh, I don't know if it's going to absorb because they're very watery. So, uh, and this is the black and white I'm talking about. So I know they're very, very watery. So I would do a test on like a, you know, something like that. Uh, oh, here we go. Roy has done it. And Roy said that he did a t-shirt with my ink and it came out good. Hey, Roy, thank you so much. I learned so much Roy is one of my students I learned so much from my students it's unbelievable sometimes I should they should uh, charge me so that's pretty exciting so my football method right so here's the football method basically I cut these football type shapes right and I cut them out and you'll see, I'm going to cut it all along the contour of this paper. And those who haven't seen this before, it's going to be a revelation. And 
those who have seen it before, you're going to be like, oh, I've seen this before, Tim, so what? But it's pretty cool because it's a great way to get really beautiful hard edges in your work and protect the areas that you don't want overspray. So let's say if I went ahead and sprayed the background and didn't protect the face, that really beautiful light that I have in the very beginning using the 50-50 illustration white would get gray and murky. And you know what? The edges would look all weird and before you know it, it's just not as an effective painting as it could have been. So, you know, yes, this might be a little bit more tedious and boring, but it just pays off. Now, Tim will say, hey Tim, why don't you use, um, why don't you use, uh, you know, the uh, frisket film? And I did use frisket film in the past, and I will use it very sparingly in the future. But it does leave glue onto your surface, and you do have cut lines. So those are very big issues, you know. Uh, the Nameless Artist says, uh, hey, you guys. Have you used Tim's inks? Had any trouble with fading after the wash? Okay, that's good questions, definitely, for uh, when it comes to uh, working on, let's say, t-shirts. So, uh, Roy actually did. So, that's a very interesting topic of discussion, which I'm very interested to hear your guys and girls, uh, you know, history of findings with that. So as you can see, we're getting a nice contour around. I'm gonna show you the next step. And Michelle Miller says, why are you cutting sections out? Very good question. And I'm gonna show you, uh, once I'm done, you're gonna see, and then it's gonna make sense to you, Michelle. And, and I really don't make sense to a lot of people, <laughs> but, but in this thing, this is gonna make sense, Michelle, and I'll show you. This is a good part for people who haven't seen it because I think this is something that could be a game changer with your own airbrush art. I really feel that way. All paint will fade if it's not heated by a press dry. Oh, thank you. That's a good point there, Bill. Thanks for that bit of information. So let's see. So next week I'm going to try and get Kent Lynn, speaking of t-shirt painting, uh, now I'm in talks with Ken and Kent and I think he's going to do it but I just have to iron some things out uh, on next week. So next week we should have an interview with Kent and that would be very exciting. And you know we'll be able to see his amazing artwork and hear stories about his full career and you know he had a he, he did several covers for Airbrush Action magazine back in the day so very exciting very exciting stuff and you see we're just now I'm going along the contours but but also making sure I'm close to the contour so why close to the contour because I'm thinking several moves ahead so when I'm spraying the paper is going to want to uh, sort of billow up from the air from the airbrush and being closer to the contour really helps to uh, prevent that and like I said I'm taking my time there's no rush and I always say if you're if you're rushing because of a if you're rushing because of a deadline then I just think that you know, you don't go for such close deadlines. I mean, I really hate rushing when it comes to art because it just it just affects it, you know? Something you wanna take your sweet time. Okay, so here we are, we have our, so here's part two of this whole football thing. And I'm just gonna take some tape. Now tape can be pretty sticky so I just, you know, put it on the table and let's see, we're just going to, now what I want to do is I want to cover 
the the holes. Every hole needs to be covered because if I don't, it'll actually show up. You'll have a football size uh, shape in ink and that's something you don't want to do. So you see, and it's a lot easier actually to go vertical like this, but get off the excess glue by, you know, rubbing it on the table so it's not so sticky. You don't want it to tear up your, your paper. Although the paper that I use, the color line paper, it's a 184 pound color line paper by De La Rowney. And it's pretty durable. But it comes in two colors that I use. I use pebble gray and light gray. Pebble gray seems to be a little more of a durable surface than the light gray. We're working with pebble gray. However, if I was working with um, the light gray, I would be even more careful because it doesn't uh, it doesn't work as well. It tends to uh, kind of kind of pull on that a little bit now you see here just in this one spot the tape went over so I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that's not there to get rid of that so we're going to continue up there as you can see we're already halfway done and Yes, so, so definitely, Brad, the white pastels are really fantastic because the white pastel actually works as white acrylic paint. It does what the white acrylic paint would do, but there's no blue shift whatsoever. Now, I have many, many years in, a, in pastel, so if pastel didn't make its way into my airbrush, there would be something wrong with all the knowledge I have of pastel, manipulating it, its properties, and working on paper, it would almost be ridiculous not to use the white pastel, so that's pretty cool. So Michelle says, what about a white Russian? Those are pretty good, actually, aren't they? You know what I learned today? So the Vikings, they used to call the Vikings the rowers, which means Rus. And that is why they're called Russians, because they were, they had a lot of Viking cities in Russia. So that's why they called them Russians or rowers. Isn't that interesting? So I thought that was fascinating. There was a show This documentary on the history of Europe that I was watching today in between shipping out uh, airbrushes and inks So those who are in the States I shipped out all the airbrushes for those who ordered them and that was after a weekend of really hours and hours testing and perfecting the airbrush. So that was exciting. Uh, I'm so glad that that's almost done. I have, I have one airbrush that someone purchased today. That was Angela. And I'm excited that you purchased it. So that will ship out probably on Saturday because I want to make sure that it's perfect before I ship it out with the customizations. And my UK customers, they are shipping out tomorrow. So I have three UK customers who ordered the custom airbrush. They are shipping out tomorrow. So that's exciting. And let's see what I missed. Uh, Tom's giving some good information. And Steve's giving some good information. LK Clear, look at that. LK, that's neat. And LK for Larry King, who passed away, unfortunately, this week. Uh, he was a really great talk show host. He passed away. So my condolences to Larry King's family. And, uh, you know, nothing like the old school talk show hosts, you know, they just 
knew how, number one, to get the great guests, but ask the great questions. Oh, Colette, you're, oh, Colette, you're very, very welcome. That's for sure. And thank you for your patience. Because it took until Friday. I didn't get the airbrushes until Friday and the airbrush parts. So, you know, once I got them Friday evening, I worked basically around the clock for you guys. You know, putting them, putting the parts together, uh, you know, optimizing areas and testing them out. And believe me, they didn't come out like if they, if they weren't perfect the first time. There was no way I was going to send them out, so I would make sure they were perfect before they even even thought about sending them out. And there we go. Okay, so Michelle, so here we go. So this is where we're at right now. And notice that there are no uh, places where there's any of the uh, footballs not touched. Now, we have this. We're going to put this aside. Uh-oh, we lost our, our chat window. Oh, there we are. We're back. And this time it's personal. And so Steve said he was blown away. So why were you blown away there, Steve? See, I always come at the end of the middle of the uh, conversation. I'm always in the dark. And all right, so... Let's go ahead and line this up the best we can. This is always fun. This is where a very strong pair of glasses really helps, right? Let's see. Okay. So you got to let you have we have to like line this up in several areas, right? It's it's not not very easy. And Oh, look at that. See right here on the top? A little bit off. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do a sneak peek underneath some of these areas and see if they're lining up. Yes. Now, there are going to be some areas that you go over. That's all part of it. That's why you have a good airbrush where you can aim and fix areas, you know? That's what it's all about. It's not going to be perfect first time around. That's for sure. FBS gold. Yeah, that stuff is gold. Oh, my goodness. I, I seen how much that tape was. Ay, Dio, as we say in Spanish. Ay, Dio, no puedo comprar eso. Yo no tengo dinero. Okay. So, what we're going to do, que caro. So, what we're going to do is we're going to protect protect my my table you know so we're going to go up here i'm going to protect the table and i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to use this bad boy which is my extreme patriot 105 which is the same exact airbrush pretty much than the extreme patriot arrow but with this one you have a larger cup size which is great for backgrounds and stuff like that so i'm going to uh go ahead and hook this up to the compressor so right now we're at 1049. We're doing pretty good. We're just past the halfway mark of this, which is exciting. Now we're going to, let's load this up with the medium mixture, shall we? Let's see, here we go. We have our medium mixture. So my inks come in uh, light mixture, medium mixture and dark mixture. And so they all have a specific purpose. So I'm actually going to put quite a bit in here. Uh, not like a crazy amount, but I would say like maybe a fourth of a cup or something like that. Oh, so Steve says, Tim, there is a company called LK that makes top coat for sneakers. And it's unbelievable. Cool. Yes, Jeff does it. Jeff Chamberlain. That is cool. Yes. So, okay. So I'm going to stand for this. I won't stand for this. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's see. 
if maybe the other so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go side to side but notice when I go over the uh, go over the, the shield I'm always gonna paint away from it and not towards the shield on both sides so you might ask me, Tim, why do you do that? Why don't you just go back and forth? Because if you're going away from the shield, you're not going to crawl underneath. So it doesn't necessarily like a silver bullet. You won't have to fix it afterwards, but that's one less thing you need to worry about. So I'm just gonna go all the way down from here, as you see, all the way down. There we go. So I did see Mr. Leahy's uh, webs, uh, YouTube video today. And check out uh, Mr. Leahy's YouTube video if you haven't. YouTube channel. And he has these Tech Tuesdays, which is so great. And he talked about how to clean your freehand shields. Or freehand shield maintenance. I thought that was pretty neat. So I'm going to go ahead and do this side over here. And remember... You're going to go away, away from the freehand shield or the paper shield. Away, look away, like that, okay? There we go. And let's see, I'm going to sit down. I'm not going to stand for this any longer. I'm sitting. Okay, so... And I'm going to do several layers, so I don't worry about any kind of blotching or anything like that. That's not a concern for me. And so I'm just spraying away, just like so. So Steve, if you can, could you type a link to your uh, Facebook page? So, not uh, your Facebook, but your YouTube channel? So people can go ahead and subscribe. That would be the coolest. Now I'm just moving it up and I'm just gonna go down here. Yes, well actually with the background, this is actually media mixture. I wanna accelerate uh, the value with the media mixture. So I'm going, uh, I'm going uh, a little bit darker, a little bit quicker with the background. And the good thing is I'm using the, the media mixture and also using the Extreme Patriot 105 with the larger cup so I don't have to change the cup as you Everything's a give and take, right? It's a give and take that you have the larger cup, you give away some of the ability to have the tight detail because the cup does obscure your view. And you give that away. But with the smaller cup, you give away the ability to have more ink. So there's a job, there's a tool for every job. And so this one is really good for the ink. Now, why wouldn't I use this bad boy in that case? Well, the reason I use this one for when I'm spraying acrylic, like the light mixture, because of the larger needle nozzle combination, and also the fact is there are less um, moving parts inside. And so that's why the Vega is good for very large pigment and paints. But this one, I still have the ability to do tight detail. And it has a 0 0.30 nozzle, so it still has ability to get some really nice atomization, which is really cool. You know, so that is exciting. And so you see how I do one side, and now I do the other side. And what's really cool, I'm going to save this uh, shield here. And I can come in and make it darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to establish this. 
And you see, I put a lot of ink in there. So I'm able to pretty much paint without having to load more ink. Notice I'm, I have the air on all the time. I'm moving this way without pressing down, going this way, pressing down. And as you get better with the airbrush, you sort of get that whole cadence where your mind, your hand, and your eyes are kind of working as one, which is good. Uh, let's see. It looks like nothing's happening, but something is happening. Trust me, something's happening. So before we were worried about anatomy, now we're just worrying about, this is a lot easier, we're just worrying about painting stuff on there, that's all. Now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna do one more coat. And you notice when I do one side and this side and that side, what it's allowing me is allowing it to actually dry and then go over it because with any kind of liquid uh, media, it's going to pull on the surface if it gets too wet. Now I always say this analogy and those who have been with me bear with me saying it again, but think of, you know, a rainstorm out on your front yard and when it first begins to rain, you can see that the ground soaks up the rain pretty easily. But as it continues to rain over and over again, the, the ground gets oversaturated. When it gets oversaturated, it can no longer soak up the rain fast enough, and then you have a puddle. And when you have a puddle, it starts splashing. So think of the same thing when it comes to <coughs> working with paper and media is that you want to make sure that that you don't oversaturate the ground and create puddles just like you don't want to oversaturate the paper and and make puddles of ink or acrylic that you work in or what have you so we're going to go ahead and do another one over here and let's and then you know it's not going to be perfect it may be perfect but not always but that's that's part of it you know that's the part of the fun of painting it's not going to be perfect and let's see And remember, I have this shield. I can always put it back and work darker. But let's take a look. A sneak peek, so to speak. So let's see. Uh, let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, see a little bit of it. Well, look at that. The nice, look how nice though. Look how it kind of like transformed a little bit, right? I can always go a little bit darker if I so decide, but you can see the important parts like the side of the face and also this side of the contour is on the money. So I'm pretty happy with this. There are some fixing to do over here, but no big deal. Now what we can do as well is I had a football uh, earlier with the face and I know it was done last week. And I'll show you exactly. So it's actually dry. See how fast that dried? Dried really fast, you know. What kind of compressor is suggested? So many things to consider. Uh, if you have the means, get one of those silent compressors. This way, you know, you're not going to wake people up. But if you have a limited amount of means and you still want something really good, I have to say California Air Tools is the way to go. But you're going to get 10 people. You might get 10 different answers with that. And you see that? I'm just going to make sure. There we go. So what I can do is I could come in with the light mixture. Because even though I went to media mixture in the background, don't get too, I won't want to get too happy. 
and start going a little crazy with that. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to go perpendicular and not parallel. And I'm going to deepen that shadow here. See how things start to ramp up really fast? You know why? Because we're, we're, we're not wasting time, but we're not looking at the clock. Meaning, I don't care if this takes three months to paint. I honestly don't care. As long as it's done right, that's all I care about. Uh, as long as I do my best job, I'm happy. So, I don't care how long it takes. It's not a concern. If I have a commission and they need it fast, I just tell them to get another artist because, uh, you know, I'm going to put my name on it, so I definitely don't want to put, I don't, definitely don't want to rush into anything. But that's me. I'm a very, you know, I work very liberally, and uh, I take my time. Some artists really strive on tight detail. Not me, though. I'm not good at it. So you see how we're creating some really nice three dimensions, and we're still in the light air, or we're still in the light mixture and we have real volume imagine when we start coming into media mixture the dark mixture and then even after that with the white pastel it's just she's just going to really start to pop again i'm going i'm going perpendicular and not parallel and trust me on that it's uh it's definitely a real reason for it and you'll know the difference when you start working uh, in the perpendicular not parallel then go back and you'll see how different that is okay so now we're just going to lift this up and see uh, where we have to fix and we're going to have to fix some areas that's just but you see how I went ahead and deepened that shadow there. And I can even deepen that a little bit more. So let's go back and deepen it just a little bit more. Yes, we are going to go in with the medium mixture, and that's going to even have a greater effect. But we have to exercise patience here. Patience is a virtue when painting in the transparent method, which I am doing. I'm working in light glazes. Actually, I just went in a little bit with the medium mixture on accident. That was not intended, but it's okay. It's okay. My medium mixture and my light mixture, mixture are close, so I wouldn't have done that on purpose. So anyway, let's take a look and uh, lift it up. There we go. Okay, so really happy with what's happening. And so you see this light, this line right here? But what's going to happen is I'm going to actually deepen that up as we go. And this sort of line at the edge is actually going to become part of, of this shape. See that? So that's going to pretty much disappear. So when things look too dark, you don't want to say, oh my God, it's too dark. I must lighten it. That's when people get eraser happy. And you don't want to get eraser happy. Remember, things will catch up. If you went too dark, don't go too crazy. Just realize that, you know, it's going to catch up. So make a mental note not to go any darker there. But still, you know, don't try and fix everything in the early going. You can't fix it because it's too early to fix it. It's like trying to change cake while it's in the oven, you know? It's too early. Too late and too early at the same time. So we got some really good uh, airbrush compressor talk going on there. I'll let you guys go to it. But you see how that background really just sort of brought things into... Uh, greater definition and you can see I can darken the hair here okay so why use the footballs and not free why use the footballs 
and not freehand shields because freehand shields are not going to give you the clarity of covering everything at one time. Even if you have a freehand shield, it's going to have, there's going to be overspray and it's going to affect a nice, beautiful white area like this. So that's one reason. Why would you use the footballs with the paper shield and not use frisket? Because frisket, I have to go in and I have to use my razor blade and cut onto the paper. And I don't care if you're like, you know, Marcus Welby, MD, you are going to go ahead and score that paper. And so it's going to backfire you in one way or another. And that's why I use the paper. So that's, that's my reasoning for that. Why I use the paper is because I can actually have the same size and the same shape of anything that I want. So that's great too. So I have my reasons for that and I think it's pretty cool. So the nameless subscriber says definitely went eraser happy for years when working with pencil, ruined a lot of projects. Yeah, you know, it, and uh, the nameless subscriber, what you want to do is you, you just want to slow things down a little bit, you know, have more of a leisurely, uh, you know, approach to it. And I think that will, will help you. And going from light to dark, as you see, I'm going here, is really going to have a really sort of liberating feel. You don't have to get it perfect right away. You can just slowly get there. Now, uh, you just want to just make sure also, so right here, I'm not going to use any freehand shield because the edge is really very soft to the background here. So I'm going to catch up the background a little bit to the dark there and make sure that there are no hard edges on this side. Now I'm always going to ask myself, you know, where I am I actually um, neglecting, right? And so I'm always going to ask myself, where can I go ahead and start putting in some information that needs to be in there that I haven't really given much thought to? So with that, I would have to say the hair, right? I think I am neglecting the hair to a certain extent. Now I have a number of different erasers and this is where I would probably get a little aggressive. And what I want to do is I want to pull out some of these light colored hairs here. And let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to pull out. Now, we really have to pay attention, right? It's says, oh, important to do the one second rule. If you don't know about my one second, you don't paint for a second until you have looked for a second. And you don't uh, paint for longer than you have looked. So that keeps you honest. So we're just going to erase out some of the light hair. Remember, hair next to a light background is black. Hair next to a dark background is white. And that is a pretty good rule and pretty much is a constant. So not going crazy just indicating right so this way it's not a big surprise when i go darker and i'm establishing these shapes so i can actually airbrush around it later down the line so you see it's all about you know it's it's all about you know playing one or actually five to ten steps ahead like chess, those of you chess enthusiasts, I play about, I would say probably about four games of chess a day. And chess is actually so important when uh, getting the skills to paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some of these in there. Not going crazy, I'm just gonna indicate like, okay, there's some some hairs over here, right? It's not just this voided area. So we're gonna look around and see where we can do more of that, if we do need to do more of that. Not too much, I think we do have a light hair coming down here. 
we can just indicate that. See that? So that's that's cool. Now we can definitely maybe work a little more in the hair here, just uh, you know, darkening some areas. So let's come back here and darken it. Now we can actually go ahead and put a freehand shield there, but part of me is not wanting to because it's kind of soft edge over there. So I don't want a hard edge. So I don't really need a freehand shield at this point. One second is a good rule. I have, to, yes, it really is because, you know, if you think about it, so if you see an inkjet printer, right, and you just see how that inkjet printer, it's like $26, and you just hit that button and it'll, it'll show exactly what you're printing out. And the brain of an inkjet printer is nothing like our brain. Our problem is our brains get in the way. You know, our mind, we start thinking about other things and internalizing. What is, what am I going to get at the supermarket tomorrow? Or, you know, all these different things. And so that's why the one second rule really keeps us honest and keeps our subconscious mind from getting in the way. So, and sort of like I say to myself, if that, like, little... $26 inkjet printer can do it. You know, I got to train my mind to try and and do that to show to show that inkjet printer that my mind is much more effective than that. So there you go, and you can see she is really coming together. And now at this point, I might move around a little bit. And I might do a little half tone here or there and just play around and uh, but I'm just going to continue with the hair and just remember where I neglect is where I need to work. So I was neglecting the hair so time to work on that hair a little bit. It's not good to neglect an area. Because if you neglect an area long enough it's going to be totally out of balance. And now you're going to have to bring that hair into balance. We're not those speed painters who do an eye and another eye and a nose and the mouth and move down like a, like one of those billboard painters. No, we're not like that. So we want to paint the ensemble. That's the fine art way of doing it. Paint the painting as a whole, not a bunch of pieces. You know, a person's not a bunch of pieces. It's the encompass... encompass they encompass everything. That's who they are. When you recognize a person from, let's say, a block away, you can recognize their features because it is the, the whole that you're recognizing, not just, you know, oh, I know those lips or whatever. It's how everything relates to something where the true character of that person is. And uh, really, I want you to look for that. Because Jean Augusta Dominique Angra can't be wrong, is that you want to paint the ensemble. You don't want to. And you, he also said when you paint the ensemble, the painting will look as though it was painted all in one breath. Isn't that cool? And so, as you can see, no freehand shield here because there's almost. The values are so close to one another there that you almost, the edge of the hair next to the background almost disappears. Pretty, pretty cool. There we go. So now what we can do, since we worked on this side, there's a dark on this side. So let's go ahead and address that, right? Can you do this stuff on your kitchen table, Michelle asked, as far as uh, painting? Uh, definitely, you know, I would just put down paper and stuff to protect uh, your, you know, your, protect your table. 
But that's another reason why India Inc. might be a better solution for you because India Inc. Uh, is safer for you as fumes and everything in the kitchen. Because if you're working with uh, acrylic, you're going to need reducers. And reducers have chemicals in it. And I don't think that's a good idea to have those chemicals spraying around when there's a pilot in the kitchen. So if you are going to work in the kitchen, India Ink is definitely the way to go. Without a doubt. When I was a kid, I started on the on the uh, dining room table, not airbrushing. See, when I was in art school, airbrushing was considered uh, taboo. We weren't even allowed to mention the word airbrush in uh, in art school. And I went to I didn't go to like commercial art school. I went to you know like a fine classical art school, fine art art school where traditional methods and techniques and traditional materials so uh, that was not even an option which I think is a limited thing in retrospect or you know in hindsight I think being exposed to the airbrush early would have changed the trajectory of my career in the early going anyways that's for sure Oh, well, I hope it's for you, Michelle. And if you have any questions, you know, everyone's here. Uh, feel free to email me if anyone has any questions. Uh, here is uh, right here. My email address is paintedglyphs at gmail.com. So if you have any art questions or anything, I'm always happy to help. And everyone here is always happy to help too, which is really cool. Oh, that was, see, you got to always watch what you're doing. I almost, uh, almost went in with the medium mixture, so. Always have to have our head in the game, you know. You're welcome, Michelle. Very welcome. So very loosely, I'm looking at the large shapes of the hair here. Very loosely. So uh, when I took a class with Jonathan Pantaleone, I took two classes with him in his studio in Union City, New Jersey, which is about a half hour from me. And that was pretty cool. And uh, we worked in your things. Now that stuff is deadly. Holy cow. I had a sore throat from your things. I mean, I'll never work in your things again, but it was great to be exposed to that. And uh, so I'm thankful. And Jonathan was a great teacher. If you ever get a chance to study with Jonathan, I would say go for it. He's really fantastic. Incredible detail, right? Jonathan Jonathan does everything with the Eclipse. I mean, his incredible detail with the Eclipse is just amazing. But it just it goes to show you it's not the needle or not the nozzle size. There's a lot of other things that goes into making an airbrush an excellent detailed airbrush. So nozzle size is really, like I said, I could, with this airbrush, I could take out some of those really tight needle airbrushes easily. Easily I can take them out with the detail that I can get with this 0 .30 needle nozzle. Easily. And so you see, she's starting to come together, you know, I'm not in this uh, crazy rush. No way, Jose. I'm taking my time. And let's see. Um, so yeah, Jonathan does this incredible detail. Just amazing. Uh, thank you, Brad. So Brad says that my method is easy to learn. I think it's because I simplify a lot of things that trip up a lot of students. Now, when you learn painting portraits, you know, learning how to use the airbrush is one thing, but the biggest work is 
You know, if you're painting portraits, you better, better start worrying about anatomy, you know, because you have to have something to say about your subject. And if you're not studying anatomy, you have less to say about it. So it's so important to study your anatomy. Crucial. Okay, so where else am I ignoring this beautiful young lady? So, well, right now, I just want to make sure I have this correct. This comes out a little bit. And it comes out over there. And her bun. We got to work on her bun. Now, in Spanish, they call it a moño for my Spanish peeps out there. Now, Chris, you know that's a moño, right? That's a big old moño up here. And so, Chris knows... So I did miss a little bit, so with good aim, I can go ahead and bring that background up to the edge there. And let's see, so I'm going to, with, what's really cool is with pure ref, I could zoom in and zoom in into area, any area, which is really some weird wild stuff, as Johnny Carson would say. Of course, I'm dating myself finding out how old I am, that I'm quoting Johnny Carson. I did not know that. That's another thing he used to say. So it's so great. I still have 19 people here towards the end of the live stream. And that's great. You know, it's nice to have the, the peeps in the beginning. But to get people to stick around for two hours, that's cool. And I appreciate you guys and girls for sticking around with me and hanging with me on Wednesday evening. It's going to be Thursday tomorrow. I can't believe it. Holy Toledo. Yes, I'm shipping out those airbrushes to the UK tomorrow. Uh, nameless subscriber says, uh, do you think you will finish this in... No way, no, I'll never, this is not even close. I'm so far away from this, uh, the nameless subscriber. I would say I'm maybe 35% done. That's how far away I am. But I'm very slow and taking my time. With this technique, you wanna build up the dark super slow. And that's what we're doing. And Chris says, Tim, I can't see you ignoring any pretty woman. I know you're <laughs> Uh, a very unsuccessful player, I might add, but, you know, I do try, Chris. I'm not a big shot in that department as you are, sir. I am, uh, I'm a little shot. I'm like a shot glass. Oh, Wendy says I am fast. Wendy says she's made slower. And, oh, you, you do great, Wendy. You underestimate yourself. Wendy's a very talented artist. And last I heard you were concentrating on watercolors. Is that true? I know you were doing Procreate for a while, but everything was kind of on the shelf when you weren't feeling well. So now you're feeling well, Wendy. What is going to be on your agenda as far as what medium you're going to work in? Same bat and same bat channel, John says. <laughs> now with these, I'm so sorry if I didn't get to any questions. I definitely wasn't ignoring anybody. It's just, you know, with the one second rule, trying to get this all together, it's not always easy to paint and talk and look at the, look at the, the comments at the same time. But if they're really like important questions I didn't get to, feel free to go ahead and email me. I'll get back to you. Joe K. Prometto. Okay. So you see, and also remember what we did here that the values were close to one another? And they weren't so far away. But the first thing I'm going to do is move the background so it's close to the 
move the background so it's close to the contour here. Like I said, any kind of, uh, you know, masking is not going to be perfect. Uh, it is perfect in the important places, but some areas are not going to be so perfect. Now remember I said that the values are pretty close to one another, and that sort of brings that closer into the background, right? Because the monio or the bun is going further back, and this is, uh, this of course is coming forward as we get to the hair next to the forehead. So look at that, we're 1125, you know? Rome wasn't built in a day, so true, Brad. And you know what, we're just gonna take our sweet time. Oh, Wendy, working in watercolor. I cannot wait to see, please send me some pictures. Wendy does some beautiful watercolors. Uh, just really nice. She can do any medium she sets her mind to. So that's encouraging. So what I'm going to do when I come back is I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover the background and everything but the shirt, and I'm actually going to come darker, especially on this side of the shirt. It's darker. It's time to give some dimension to the shirt. So when you're working, take care, Todd. Good to see you, my friend. So when you're working, you always want to look and say, you know, where is it that I'm neglecting, right? What am I neglecting in this painting? And then you address that. And that's how you keep everything coming together. Is that you're constantly, you know, your eyes constantly roaming, looking for areas that need more attention, right? And you can see here, it's a little blotchy, but that's why we do several layers. Each layer, you know, gets more smooth. So it's pretty cool. And as you can see, it's, she's still very light, but we're getting there. We're not in a rush. And I'm not trying to worry. Like, let's say right now, if I looked and I said, oh my God, it doesn't look like her. That's the trap. That's what you have to worry about. And please, don't, don't ever uh, try and worry. You're not painting the likeness. You're painting the lightness. So you are light detectives. You are not a portrait painter in the early going. You are just looking at the light and nothing else. So uh, make sure you don't get into that trap of making it look like her in the early going. You're definitely going to go south. So you don't want to do that. Okay. And thank you so much, Brad. I appreciate that. And uh, this, the nameless subscriber says he figured as much. He works the same way with graphite. Slow and gradual, yes. You keep that motto and you're gonna be just fine. So keep that up, keep that, uh, that whole philosophy going. And she's gonna thin out when we go ahead and start modeling the forms. Right now she might look a little chunky, but that's only because of you know several things. Right here you can also see where the nose the nostril on the left side, the values are a little too farther away, so I'm just gonna make them closer. And making them closer actually thins out that nose a little bit. And also we have to deepen in this uh, cast shadow of the nose, right? And all those little things do help, and little at a time, and we're just gonna dust over. And so what we're doing is just slowly slowly giving substance to the forms. Now, when you're painting a portrait, you're not just painting one form. There's several forms that are on top of a larger form, which is the head or the skull. And then you have the nose, which is a form. You have the eyes, which are forms. And they're independent as far as a three-dimensional surface. They do follow the rules or, you know, of the larger shapes as far as the way the light is hitting it. But in their own right, they're being affected by the three-dimensional surface, being affected as a three-dimensional surface by the light source, whether it be the sun or whatever. Take care, Colette. It was great to see you. So cool. Let me know when your airbrush arrives. I can't wait. I know you're going to love it. I hope you're going to love it.
And so we are at 11.30. So that means, guys, we made it. We made it through this live stream. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thanks, guys. Uh, really appreciate your time. And so that's where we are right now, looking at it from a different angle. We're just going to get there slowly in our own time. We're not worried about whether or not it looks great at this stage. It's just where it is, where it needs to be. Just like when you're, you're baking a cake. You don't take it out, you know, in 35 minutes and say, oh, this doesn't taste right. Nope. You let it cook. So let it cook. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Brad. And thank you, Jewel, if you're out there. Uh, Wendy and B Willie. Uh, thank you, guys. I hope you can Steve and everybody. Uh, Chris and Nameless Subscriber and all you really cool people. Thank you. I hope you have a Michelle. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you come back next week. And the Nameless Subscriber, you too. Take care, you guys. And I will see you soon.